hilarious that they're huge fans of yeah. the role playing game. And I feel so far like they went, okay, guys, this is what's within our budget. So these are all of the things that we need to change. And they reined in a whole bunch. And like, it feels like they took like a surgical approach to what they thought they could do right. And they worked really hard at that little slice. And like I love their, their the graphics are phenomenal. Uh, yeah. Like the the world the the, the 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 what the fuck are they called the like the little things in the world are just so great. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like the set dressing. Yeah, but it's like if you're gonna give me an XCOM style game, I want skill trees way deeper than that. Well, not only that, but like the core the role playing game that they're inspired by has the whole XCOM style base system yeah. built into the role playing game and it was very obvious that they went yeah we have to dump that and like overwrite the narrative that there, makes that well, there's work. a little bit of it there's the you bring artifacts back and y yeah but it's not oh yeah yeah i know it's, yeah, it's, it's 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 nowhere near the same because like when you're so like the the, the role playing game is basically like oh god it's so many good things put together it the, the 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 sessions start with everybody not playing their characters but you're actually playing the community as a whole mm -hmm. and like the idea is that like at the beginning of every session it represents almost like a town hall meeting hmm. where you're like okay guys what do we do next like you're role playing out the decision process as part of like a civ game but it's not from like oh what will give us the statistical bonus it's like what is making people not die today yeah because the GM starts, you start with anywhere from like 180 to like 210 citizens in an arc. And the GM every in-game day rolls a D6. That many people die that day from not having food, water, and other medical resources. So at the beginning, you're like, okay, we need food. And then as you like get certain upgrades, like the GM is going, okay, it's a D6 minus one. So if I roll one, nobody dies today. And then as you get you know, access to other things and you build up the arc and then eventually it's like, okay, well, we don't have what we need. We can't just keep sitting here making farms and stuff like that, guys. We've actually, like, there's there's a tech tree that has uh, requirements you, that your civilization needs to meet and then you're like, okay, well, we have to go out and get that. We can't stay here. We have to venture out into the wasteland. And the, the computer game is just like, yeah, everybody... It, Imagine you're playing Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. and then you play a Dungeons and Dragons video game and they're like, all right, everybody's a ranger. Hmm. Different kinds of ranger, but everybody's a ranger. Okay. And we fight illithids. Are there any other enemies? No. And you can make that work. They did. I'm not, that's not a, that's not a slight. Like that, that's what I mean when they say they took the very surgical focus and they're and like, they made it work. Yeah. yeah. They're like, everybody's a well, ranger. There's, there's two, two kinds of, there's two kinds of enemies and there's, and they have three kind of class roles. There's, there's the, the tank with the shotgun, there's sure. the sniper in the back. And then there's the mid range person. Sure. And the stalkers in the role playing game though, can do all of that. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we have a podcast, don't we? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we are at least talking about tabletop games. Well, that's that's helpful. Yeah. You know, remotely. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, are, do we have any? Do we? Need, do you need me to share? By the way, we're good. No, you need to share. Oh, you okay. You should do the thing you were talking about. <laughs> okay. Hey Ryan, where are the index cards? Um, they're not here. I have never seen them before. Can in my I mention how much I love these dice? Yeah. You you have. I'm gonna have glorious. Have you mentioned it to James before though? I'm gonna make yesterday yeah, I actually I have. have. Yeah, yesterday. I'm gonna make sweet, sweet love to these dice and have dice babies. <laughs> Appropriately weighted. Yep. I I will I will say, however, there is one there is one aspect of the role playing game that I'm glad that they kept out of the video game. The racism. No. There is there uh, <laughs> for 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 like I really need to finish the the video game because I don't want to spoil what you might what you don't know, but one of the classes that you can be is literally slave, because unless you choose to have like a democratic society, um, your tanks, your the, the the slave class has a special ability that allows them to soak damage. 
that's pretty awful. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, oh no. Yeah. No, no, well, no, no, you know, no, no, here, no, no, here's no. the thing: is you know, if you want to tell interesting stories about that, you 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 kind of have to make it. You have to give it an economic imperative. <laughs> well, the, no, it it you can. So the way that you can build it, you can either they 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 leave it up because that's that's one of the big things about the game is like like you have to build a society. You do not have one. It is your job as the players in this game. Like you're not just saying, oh, we need X whatever upgrade because there's a statistical bonus for it. Like, no, the role playing aspect of that comes out in in like very heavy ways. Like it gets very emotionally heavy. Like at the 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 heaviest I ever got for my home group, at one point we had to establish <clears throat> um well, I was running it. So I made them establish at what point does the state get to step in and decide when they get to intervene on your autonomy. Mm. And it was like, like everybody involved, like we had a very respectful discussion about it, but it basically came down to like (laughs) the mutants can't reproduce. Um, And they found out why they found out because one of the mutants got pregnant, but she was also part of like a suicide cult. And they were like, so we have to figure out how the continuation of our species is handled, but, but so Ryan, on and so forth. Ryan, could we talk about a game you enjoy? I don't understand the question. <laughs> could you maybe bleep the bloops? Yeah, yeah. Like Cat oh, told you to. And, uh, yeah, it's... Man. He thinks it's terrible. A horrid. I horrid. So. This, this is, this is, is what, what we're saying here. here. Yeah, this is a yeah. terrible terrible game yeah I, I i would love i would love for us to get through a significant amount of uh of of you know some mutant just, year zero just so you know it's probably not going to happen on the cast at some <laughs> our I, docket is super full <laughs> oh yeah no i'm not saying it, it, it sorry everybody it probably won't but if you ever <coughs> want to play sometime james you mean year zero yeah man i'd love to play that'd be awesome yeah That's cool. yeah i because we have all these we'll struggle not to be racist in that racist racist world. Well, so <sighs> I will too. I just I'll just fail. There <laughs> so so I don't think that this is a way to sorry <laughs> to solve it, but there are no separate races. It's, I mean, classism, sure. You can say you don't want to be classist, but there is no... I'm already classist. Like, all of oh, you... Yeah. Rogues fucking rule, man. Uh, that I do know about you. And bards, fuck them. Oh, they're amazing. Everybody's 20 years old. Bards. Hey, we have viewers. <laughs> all right, yeah. let's get started then. All right. We were waiting on you, viewers. You are the special ones. It wasn't me. What's the episode number? 264? You want me to say it like that? Yeah, I do. I really do. Um, Cause that would be, that would be, I would feel honest. Yeah, two sixty four. Show my new dice one more time. Um, my new dice. They're super and I'm sexy. I'm checking the calendar to see when this what what the date is that this will go up on the feed. I don't care. You will. Do I look like one of our listeners? You'll care, Cameron. Okay, so if we release this within the current schedule, it will come out like two or three days after Christmas. Okay, we're not we're not doing a Christmas. Episode no, this no, year. no, 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 no. It'll be the it'll be the it'll be like I I didn't math correctly. Okay, if Christmas emerges in this thing, there will be some Christmas. But I'm not like we don't have to do that. It doesn't have to be a thing. No, I know. I'm just saying so that you know. It will come out around the 20th. There's one thing I care about, Ryan. What's that? One thing and one thing alone. Me? What's the episode number? 264. Thank you. (laughs) Welcome to the Play Better Podcast. Tabletop Played Better. Episode 264. Once again, it's time for another Let's Play Better. This time out, Tall Pines. The role-playing game of basically Twin Peaks. Oh, it's like more of a narrative game than a role-playing game. Anyway, I'm Cameron McNary. Uh, I'm James Flanagan. And I'm Ryan Seguin. Welcome back, James. It has been a while. Yeah, yeah been, good to be you, back. You haven't been on since May, actually. It's been a while. Of yeah. this year? Yeah. Of 2018? Yeah. That's the last time we did uh, Nightcrawler Investigations. Mm-hmm. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's been it, ages. Yeah. 2018 has been the longest year ever. Yeah. And it, it's it not really over has. yet. It's, no. it's going to keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you even. It's don't, you, don't you even. Oh, I'm as eager for it to be done, but it's just going to keep going on. Yeah, it, so we're going to have 2018-2 yeah. next year. Mm-hmm. Smart weather. Yep. <laughs> end game. <laughs> 2018, 2018 end game. game. Oh man, you know what? I am really excited. For so that. we are, we are playing Tall Pines, which is basically Twin Peaks, the uh, the narrative game. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. quite looking forward to it. I'm not a huge Twin Peaks fan, but I, I dig the aesthetic. So I've seen a few episodes of Twin Peaks, like like maybe two or three. Yeah, uh, I'm down. Yeah. Oh. I know I'm terrible. I'm a horrible. I person. I really. I know who killed Laura Palmer. Firefly, shut the fuck up. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I can't say anything. I just... <laughs> I often just get it confused with other movies that guy did. So I'm like, it was, it was the dude, Nightmare Man, behind the dumpster with his two very small tourist people. Right? Mulholland Drive? Yeah. Well, that is That film is so good. It's really... That is... Disturbing. That is an amazing yeah. film. <sighs> yeah. Especially for an actor, it's like... Silencio. <laughs> like, the scene that she... Did, like, when she goes in for the audition... And then she turns on the, 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 the juice, and it's like, oh, you're fucking with me. Okay, so you're, you're, and it's su- successfully. You are fucking with you me see, successfully. You, you connected with that part. For me, I just connected to the scene where she masturbates and cries. That's, that's my Well, wife. no, I think we Wait, all did. What so. movie are we talking about? It's Mulholland Drive. Okay. <laughs> it's an excellent film, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what, what, what does Chad have to say, Kat? What kind of dice are they, Cameron? They are, uh, I believe, aluminum... Um, enameled dice, which is kind of a new thing. I hadn't seen it before, but I found them this year at PAX Unplugged. They two different booths had these. These were the less expensive of the two, and actually, I think, the prettier. Uh, and they've, they've used that negative space beautifully. They just, uh, you can really, it's so legible, I believe, is what I said, as I had an orgasm and fell to the floor. <laughs> See, when you say aluminum and enamel, I can only think metal teeth. That's I can only think, like, tongue twisters. Aluminum and enamel, aluminum and enamel, aluminum and enamel. Well, flip it. Enamel and aluminum, enamel and aluminum. Enamel Ooh, that's aluminum. good. You yeah, see, I'm, good. I'm thinking about it and I can't even do it. Yeah. Not even in my head. So <laughs> I'm not even going to try to speak. But aluminum. Yeah, that works. Yeah. MFA, baby. <laughs> that, Master gets... fucking actor. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's get started. It's a card based scene calling game. Um, as those of you who are watching this on. The Twitches can see we have some cards. It has many cards. Um, we don't know what they do yet. But, uh, we, you know, we will just uh, we'll jump in with the how to play. Um, you know, there's no whole introduction and stuff that you're supposed to read, but whatever. About tone and shit. Psh. Like, whatever. We know tone. Okay, to begin play, read this aloud to the players. To begin play, read this aloud to the players. Well, okay. All right. All right. So let's get started. See what I did there? Yeah. yeah okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. A tragedy has befallen the sleepy mountain town of Tall Pines. One of its best and brightest, a young local with a promising future, has been killed, murdered horribly in the prime of their youth. Together, we will unravel the mystery of their death, discover what it means for our little town, and possibly even learn who done it. But we may learn more than we ever wanted. I know. Love that it's gender neutral. It could be anybody. Not just like, you know, pretty cheerleader. Oh, hopefully it's, not me. It's, it's not like, Laura Palmer. Yeah, exactly. This, it, this could could be be La- it could, it could be Laura Palmer. Oh. But we know who killed Laura Palmer. It could be Plora Lomer. <laughs> Lama Plural. <laughs> Lama Plural. I think we have There were many of them. got to be Lama Plural. <laughs> oh, okay, wow. shuffle, shuffle the protagonist cards. And draw six, laying them out in a row on the table and putting the rest back in the box. So let's lay those out. So, I'm sorry, say that for me one more time. Lay, six of them across the top, these these protagonist cards. Remember, we yep. don't matter. Yep. We have an audience. So yep. lay them out so the audience can read them. Yep. I don't even know if they can. You said six, right? Yes. All right. And give me the others. Got to go away. So we have... Yeah, I'm not one of those. I can't read that... it from far away. Uh, uh, Cheshire, oh, that's exquisite, mm-hmm. cherished, cherished eccentric. Cherished yeah, that's better. That's yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, privileged athlete, bad infidelity. Oh, no. Bad influence. Gotta use my progressives. Bad influence. 
best friend, federal agent, and local sheriff, as opposed to that global sheriff. <laughs> I'm an I'm a I'm I'm a world cop. What are you in charge the, of? The world. I'm the sheriff of Ireland. That's pretty much Green Lantern, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the whole sector, yeah. man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how the fuck that's supposed to work, really. When wouldn't, you get down to it, wouldn't that just be Earth, seeing as how we're the only planet with life? Oh, we're not. I mean, in our sector, right? We're not, though. He really needs to move a lot around a bit more. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, he's always like, he's always like on his patio in Coast City, and that's like, that's you know, like he only he only stops crime that comes to him. Yep. His jurisdiction is much larger than that. He doesn't actually go to work. It's like if it's. Gets his gets his tea and his slippers and go come get me parallax. Yeah, like like could you imagine if most of our cops just sort of hung out in their neighborhood rather than actually checking in and going, you know, on their assignments each day? That'd be terrible. No wonder people hate the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, they're lazy. Okay, <laughs> it's lazy. Beginning with the player who brought the game, which would be me, and continuing continuing around the table until all six of the setup questions have been answered, choose a protagonist card and answer its setup questions. Feel free to answer the question uh, in character as the protagonist you've chosen, or just cite state the facts. These answers will establish the details about the victim. Now, wait a minute. In character as the protagonist you've chosen. Okay, I say, all right, cool. And then we put that down on an on a index card. Mm. I've got index cards here for everybody. So let's see. What are what are our, cards for our options? No, see, God damn it. No, um, Lines bespeak unprofessionalism i've decided so the it's the index cards must be face down okay <laughs> index cards make it man it's a <laughs> it's a cleaner look it's all in the details ladies and gentlemen uh, index oh so what uh yeah since i can't see a goddamn thing uh james why don't you start reading okay uh, uh cherished eccentric if people were puzzled by your words or actions in the last scene flip this card over wow okay uh What letting you know the victim saw things the way you do, at least a little? Resolve. Uh, Okay, all right, all right, cool. So you don't have to read the top part, just read the... the, Just read the riddle? The the, the riddle, yeah. All right. Uh, Privileged athlete, why did you think your relationship with the victim was just for show? The bad influence. What did the victim tell you they were scared of? Oh, wow, this is nice, like a conveyor belt of... Cards. Ryan is on top it's of really it. Really good. Wait, which is the okay? Was these two okay? Uh, you get so confused. The local sheriff. Uh, what outside influence do you suspect is somehow responsible for the murder? Federal agent. What connects this murder to the case you've been following? I'm gonna go local local sheriff, uh, and the question is, uh, what outside influence do you suspect is somehow responsible for the murder? I'm gonna go with aliens. Ooh. Oh, did you, you didn't read Best Friend, Bad Influence, oh. Federal Agent. Wait, I didn't read... Oh. Because you were, like, shuffling them like some guy in <laughs> Vegas. Yeah, and then I realized I just needed to put them in front of him, so I did. <laughs> Best Influence Agent. What victim murder tell case envy most scared? What? Oh, sorry. I read them all together. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> deep breath. Deep breath. Tone check. Let's get back into this. That was the most Twin Peaks thing I could have done, <laughs> aside from reading them all backwards and being very small. It's true. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Sharpie has advice. Yes. Yes. What does the Sharpie have to say? Cheesy gordita crunches. If you get the meal, it's cheaper than buying two. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay. I already misspelled Sheriff. God damn it. Man, we are on fire. <laughs> we are. We're cooking with gas. I need you to read the other ones. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, federal agent. Uh, what connects this murder to the case you've been following? I did read that one. You did? I remember that question. Okay. Uh, the bad influence. What did the victim tell you they were scared of? You did You did that one. That's yeah, good. yeah. So, really, Ryan? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wait, wait, this might be the one I didn't read. Best friend. Oh, man. And I'm going to ask this one to you, viewers, because you are our best friend. <laughs> what part of the victim's life did you envy most? So now you got to pick one of those and answer it. Oh, man. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the best friend. Mm-hmm. And I think what I envied most about their life 
was their really flash car. And a really nice car. The best friend envied their car. Yep. It's a Dodge Dart. No, it is not. Yeah, it's definitely a Dodge Dart. Cone fucking check. No. Twin Peaks. (laughs) Uh, Okay, what kind of car? Um, We can figure that out later. Yeah. Ryan, it's all you. Mm, uh, Let's see. I'm going to be the cherished eccentric. What let you know the victim saw things the way you do, at least a little? They were polite to the fish. That's very Twin Peaks. I'm trying. Well done. You didn't get a tone check on that one. You just got a check of approval. Well, I mean, nice. I've watched, I've watched a lot of Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. I watched it back when I was rather young at the time. Now that I think about it, because um, uh, that w- it was all the rage in the '90s. Mm. You know, I remember everybody being like, "Who fucking killed Laura Palmer?" And then when we all figured it out, it was like, "Oh, huh, this went weird." Because like it. Like you, okay. So you, the the scene you described with the talking backwards, um, and and the people in the red room and all that, that's weird. That's not when it gets weird. Uh-oh. That, n- dude, if you haven't watched the rest of Twin Peaks, I have not. Do yourself a favor and go fall into one of the weirdest shows you will ever watch. It's like. Like it, for me, it falls outside of the realm of like good and bad television. Yeah. Like it kind of, it's just, it's so its thing. And you know what else about Twin Peaks? What's that? We're currently playing a game that is thematically linked <laughs> to Twin Peaks. So, what are we doing here? The federal agent, what connects this murder to the case you've been following? And I say a bag of missing bearer bonds. Oh. Ooh. Bearer bonds. James, you got the bad influence and the privileged athlete. Oh, bad influence all the way. Uh, what did the victim tell you they were scared of? Um, heights. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Vertigo. And yeah. It'll fuck you up. Mm-hmm. And then I get the privileged athlete. Why did you think your relationship with the victim was just for show? Um, Because they were unkind after the accident. They were unkind after the accident. I like that that one came from the heart. Okay, so now we have to name... Each of these individuals? No, no, just the the victim. Oh, the victim. Okay. And put it at the top of the list, and I left no room at the top of the list for that to happen, so we'll have to put it on a different card. That's fine. I could get you larger cards. That's okay. Okay, that's really good, because I'd have to go out and buy them. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Llama palaver. <laughs> I mean, it rolls off the tongue. Are you Okay, are, I have to ask, are you guys familiar with how Twin Peaks ends? Does it, no. does it really end? Yeah. yeah. Well, they did a second season, so I guess not. Or they did, like, the season 25 years later. Okay. Okay. We're doing our own thing here. Right? It, is, it is thematically linked to Twin Peaks. But... I know. I know. I know. Well, t- I'm, I'm actually asking for, for purpose of tone. Because I... So, from, from a game... I know that it's scary how it ends. Well, yes, but... So the reason I'm asking is because I want us, I want to establish shared tone. Yes. Um, and I don't want to 
I don't want my perception of what the influence on this game is to be radically different from yours. Um, because, um, there's, a, there's, it's, it's hyper fucking supernatural and mm -hmm. it's really weird. So, um, like, I guess the, the main reason I'm asking is how, you know, how much of that are we okay with? Do we want, like, what do we want to stop? I assume that we find that in play. Okay. Speaking of tone, James, uh, this is an X card. Have you ever played with an X card? Uh, no. Okay. Um, basically, if any uh, subject matter that we touch on this evening starts to make you uncomfortable, anyway, just you just either hold up or point at the X card, and we will know that means we don't go there. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need one of those in life. You think you need one of those in life? <laughs> It would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so helpful. So what's what's this person's name? Um, man, I wish we could have. I wish you could just roll for it. Uh, you can always get a name generator. Go, you know, online, search for name generator. Which, by the way, are tremendously useful for GMs out there, especially for modern games where it's really hard to come up with names that aren't stupid. Well, that and I, like... Joe... Joe... Joe McJoerson. Llama Palaver. Oh <laughs> well, the... That's my favorite. <laughs> the, my, my desire is to not create one that... Squinties McGee. <laughs> Salty Pete. And Salty, Salty Pete. Pete. Um, oh, man. Yeah, who did kill Salty Pete? Like, basically, I'm trying to... Uh, like being like people aren't random. So I, I would like to, but the, the, the world is so diverse. I like the idea of letting an impartial generator. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Do Lo that. Lobo plumber. So, you know, something natural. What, what does Chad have to say? Barbara Westfield. It's not that, bad. Uh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, it's very white. Yeah. Thanos. And, Pharaoh. Uh, yeah. Lama Palaver. Uh, so I just I clicked a a ran uh, I'm I'm I clicked a random name generator. What do we got? And I'm I'm crossing off all of the fantasy names. Yes. Um, you know you can get ones that are just modern names, right? Yeah, I couldn't. Um, like most of them are are, are fantasy. So I have uh, Joe Caslock. Aaron, Aaron Spiel Smith. Well, I have Joe Caslock. J O, not not J O E. Joe C A S. L O C. Joe Caslock. Yep. I'll put in a little underline there so we know that. So we're going with a. We're going with a female victim or male victim? Yeah, I think female. Uh, okay. I. Females get murdered more often. Well, I mean. That's that's a thing. Is it? They yeah oh yeah. Oh, that's rough. Female females get murdered a lot more often than men do. Sorry, ladies. I mean yeah, but. It's a it's a game. I'm just saying I, that's that. See, so, so it may be a game, Ryan, but it is not just a game. <laughs> well, so that's why I like the random element because isn't that like the tagline to the um, what is it, Truth or Dare movie? <laughs> oh God, it's not just a game. The game is smarter than us. I think that was. Oh, one of the, that was the I, line. I, I yeah. broke out laughing in a theater when I heard that for the, the first game's time. Game's too smart. Game's for too us. smart, and I was like, "What? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> bitch! I played Terra Mystic. Shut up. Why? I, like." <laughs> <laughs> you know, truth that they're going to be smarter than me. All right. Uh, name the protagonists here to as you answer the questions. God damn it. Oh, we had name, <laughs> name them then. Sorry. <laughs> this is what I get, we get for not reading it ahead of time. <laughs> Put the name of each protagonist on its own index card or slip of paper, also noting the protagonist's role so that you don't forget who is who. Give me some more names. Okay. Yeah. Here, you take, I'll take, take a, two of them. I'm going to need a Sharpie there. You have a Sharpie. Ryan hoarded the Sharpies. God damn it, Ryan. I gave one to each of you. Yeah, you're, you took the one I was using. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Here's a just random character yeah. generator. Okay, yes. We want names, Ryan. Give us. What was his name? Tell me his name. We watched Daredevil tonight. It's a lot of that going on. Uh, so the random, so, well, we have Joe, we have, well, Joe Caslock. We have, we, it would be a little weird to have everybody named Joe Caslock. Oh, okay. You need another random name. 
I apologize. I believe I may have mentioned that once or twice. Yeah, one of my problems is if I'm in the middle of reading something, I actually can't process external speech um, because all of the speech inside my own head uh, takes over. Uh, Are you reading right now? No. Okay. I'm I'm looking for another name. I'll wait until you're reading. It's fine. Oh, okay. Uh, we're gonna well, chat. Yeah, go go for the chat. Yeah. Raymond Steelfoot. That's oh. I mean, that's a dwarf. No, no, that's a Native American thing. A Native American dwarf thing. Who do you? I mean, it could be one of these things. Raymond Steelfoot. <coughs> right? Yeah. Maybe the bad influence. <laughs> Who's this? It's the new kid on the block. No, it's Raymond the Steelfoot. The uh, the federal agent is Raymond Steelfoot. Well, that actually does make more sense. It makes him sound like he's you know good at prosecuting. Mm crime investigating things okay i've got another one for you cases this is gonna have a lot of cards oh yeah uh sophia uh eager okay uh bad influence you mean best friend how's the how's the last name spelled eager uh e-a-d-g-e-r E A D G E R. Edger, I think. Edger. Edger. No, E I or Edger. Sophia Edger. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sophia Edger. Bad influence or best friend? What does that sound like? It's That's so- definitely Sophia. best friend. To best me. friend. Yeah. Okay. All right. Best friend. That I don't know. That e- that Edger girl. <laughs> Sophia Edger. Leave yourself plenty of room to write right underneath that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cat. What does Chad have to say? Chester Meadowlark. <laughs> Chester Meadowlark. Uh, um, We're getting into namey two words here. Well, me- metal. Words. I mean, when <laughs> rest in peace, Meadowlark Lemon. Um, Brock McGarnacle. I like Harriet Franco <laughs> is going to be the uh, cherished eccentric. Um, and the, the sheriff is going to be Chester Meadowlark. <clears throat> What's a good bad influence name? We need a bad influence. Chat, do you have a bad influence? Anyone? You're like 40 seconds behind. Oh, time. okay. Well, I Llama wait. Palaver. <laughs> <laughs> Palaver's not a bad last name. You just wouldn't call him Llama. I mean, unless that's a nickname. That's That person is... You're right. It'd be Lama. <laughs> Gloria. Gloria. Gloria Palaver. I'm going to spell Sheriff correctly this time. That, yeah, that'll do, yeah. And what does Chad have to say? Chet Dangford. No, 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 no. Now, you're trying too hard. What Chet is the perfect bad influence name? If you're going to be also, corrupted, you're going to be corrupted by someone also, named Chet nine out of ten times. A pre- of privileged ten athlete could be Chet Dangford. Oh, that would be more the privileged it's a, athlete. No, see, yeah. it's too on the nose. It's too, too, uh, you know. Isn't isn't Twin Peaks kind of on the nose, and then it kind of turns the But, but that's what I'm saying. You want to turn that a little bit. Dang, Dangford is a little too... Like my character from uh, Ten Candles. It's a little uh, too 1920s dandy. So what about like uh, Chet Hannigan? I don't know. I didn't put a cool joke in there. That's just Chad Hanningford. Chad Hanningford. There you go. That's the that's the uh, that's the that's the bad influence. Bad influence. Yeah. Chad Hanning, Han- Hanningford. Hanningford. Yeah, and uh, for the privileged athlete is going to be Hank or Han- Hank. Uh, Alder, A L D E R, Hank Alder. Well, James, if you could mm-hmm. shuffle the Act One scene cards and give each player three. Act One scene cards shuffle, give everybody three. All right. Let me shuffle the secret cards, give each player one, then put the remaining secret cards back in the box, put the remaining Act One scene cards on the table. This is the scene deck for Act One. And I don't know if we're supposed to look at these or not, so. Well, I will wait until you have read the thing before I decide whether or not I'm going to read it. Shuffle these symbol cards and put the top six, car- six cards face up in a row above the protagonist cards. Set the remaining deck of symbol cards next to the row you laid out. I'm sorry, you're going to have to go over that one more time. Take the, uh, take the symbol cards. Yep. I got us. I have one. I have. Uh, I have one. And no, no. Those are secret cards. Oh, okay. The face down. 
What else you got for me? The same symbol cards. Those? The no. purple ones to your left? Oh, these are symbol cards. I lied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so line up the protagonist stuff, All like right. here, I think. Yeah, bad. Oh, I didn't put what they were at the top. Here. And I have horrible handwriting. Good luck, world. And go ahead and put the other symbol cards next to those. Symbol cards next to those? Yeah. Okay, uh, the secret cards. Face up, you say? Mm hmm. Oh. Uh, yep, thank you. Yeah. I guess we could do this. Like, you know. Oh, that makes sense. Put the cards yeah, on the cards. Okay. Um, yeah, no, dude, here, pick a secret card. Um, so these symbol cards are just pictures. Spooky, atmospheric pictures. Okay. Do we want to slide this so that they can... How many did you say? Just one. Cat, how, how, how are the visuals looking on the lining up of the thing? Um, they're actually doing all right. All right. And, yeah, then this one just encroached upon James's space, so that's got to move. Still in there. Slightly. Well, just now, slightly. Now you're encroaching on my space. Yeah, well, Cameron, I only and do And that it. hasn't happened since 1999. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. All right, so the, the symbol cards are uh, from left to right on your radio dial. A clenched male fist. A looks like a well or an underground tunnel of some kind lit up by like maybe a flashlight or a spotlight. Uh, is that a door or bricks? That looks like a door? With like a whole bunch of ivy around it. Yeah. A dead rat. A... Oh, it's a key. It's a series of keys with little, very little late, but they're like skeleton keys. They're fan, they're they're old fashioned skeleton keys with uh, lavender ribbons and and little very very you know carefully done labels tied to them. And then a tree at a lake at maybe sundown looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, randomly choose an act one close. There's three, two, and one. An act two close and an act three close, put the remaining close back in the box. I can't read any of this. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm we'll have to pick up the cards to read stuff. Okay. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's just like how they're right in front of me, and I'm not one of those people that can read upside down. Okay, yeah. we're going to have to suspend you um, impossible mission style from the ceiling with the webcam next time. Just FYI. You're going to make me do what? <laughs> we'll fix it in post. We're not going to do anything in post. <laughs> Shh. Yeah. Just because we're lost. <laughs> Uh, awesome uh, acrobatics. It's, we'll just we'll duct tape it to your head. It'll all be good. Okay. <laughs> Whose head? Put the Act One symbol card close card next to the symbol deck. Players can read it as well as the other Act Close cards for this game. Following a future scene. Hmm. Mm, indeed. Hmm. Players can read it as well as the other Act Close cards chosen for the game. Following a future scene. So we can't read them yet. I guess? That's a little unclear. It has to be following a future scene, and it is not currently at that scene. Oh, I see. They, they have the they have the, the if-then statements. Mm. That like, yeah, okay. Action, resolve, or whatever it looks like it says. Shame. Resolve, resolve, shame. <laughs> which oh. is really the name of my sex tape. <laughs> okay, third, put all the scene cards played in the scene, in the scene, into a discard pile next to the scene deck and give any symbol cards back to the player who played them in the scene. These used symbol cards may be returned to the top of the symbol deck at any time to buy new scene cards as described. Did I just jump pages? I totally did, didn't I? Yep, I jumped pages. Because you printed these out in reverse page order. I, oh. You twerp. You're I'm like, so no, Cameron, it's fine. I'm printing out the stuff. It's all going to be good. Yeah, he, he didn't look at the page numbers at the bottom. I forgot that uh, Cameron doesn't look at anything. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, okay, this makes more sense. Put the act one close. Okay, the players can read it as well as as the other act close cards chosen for this game at any time. Everyone can have a little foresight into where the story is headed. Ooh. So the act one close card reads. Uh, um, okay, but which is the top? Which is the? I don't understand. But it says we can read them, so we'll just read the act one one. All right, uh, the act one close. When everyone has started one scene this act, whoever last cheered for a sports star starts a new scene with this prompt. The game was almost canceled, but there was no other way to arrange the schedule and not playing tonight would mean a forfeit. So the athletes careen and crash, the cheerleaders whirl and flirt, and the crowd cheers, first half-heartedly, then cathartically, as you stand amid the crowd, dot, dot, dot. And uh, has resolve include a fight involving the visiting school, include an act of unwarranted brutality, include an act of cheating or sabotage. What? Wow. Friday Night Lights, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Friday Night Peaks. It's like when they rode that bus into that ridiculously racist town. I've Twin never lights. seen Friday Night Lights. You, sir, are in for a treat. I've seen Bloodline. So now every time I see that really nice coach, I'm going to think, he killed his brother. <laughs> He didn't so much in Friday Night Lights. He's like probably the the single m- most paragon of like of good heartedness in the um, the modern American canon. That's just what Kyle Chandler wants you to think. <laughs> well, yeah, he's, he's pretty good at making me think things. So yeah, yeah, but even better at making you feel. And things. um, and if you're ever in uh, Tim Riggins number thirty three's arms, you will feel so safe. Sounds nice. And cared for. I'd like to be safe. Yeah. But he's a little dangerous, too. <laughs> Wait, what? It doesn't feel safe at all. <laughs> Tyler Tyler Kitsch, I believe, is the actor's name in question. Isn't there a murder mystery kind of thrown into Friday Night Lights at some point for no good reason? It's, no, it's not a murder mystery. It's it's the fact that two two of the characters kill this guy in a, in a random act of a, uh, accidental violence, and, and it's the covering up of it that's that's... A little bit like the writers were just trying to shuffle off it's the bubble. It's like Buffalo. season five, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, they were in um, a lull. And yeah. they were probably watching a lot of Heathers. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. No, it's not like it's not. No. Anyway, you were in for a treat, sir. Okay. Sweet. So safe. After, play, after, after playing the act one close, collect any remaining act one scene cards players may have, have and return all of the act one scene cards to the box. Okay. And then shuffle the Act 2 scene cards and deal each player a fresh hand of three scene cards. Put the Act 2 closed cards next to the symbol deck. Repeat this process when you advance from Act 2 to Act 3. Okay, all right, cool, cool. So we're using basically the appropriate Act cards during the appropriate Act. Sounds good to me. Good. A note on drawing cards. This will be repeated later, but saying it twice uh, seems good because it's a little funky. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to get a little funky? Let's get funky. Mm -hmm. Players may only draw additional scene cards from the scene deck by placing symbol cards that they've played in previous scenes back on top of the symbol deck face down. Thank God we're reading this twice. <laughs> each symbol deck, each symbol card a player puts back on top of the symbol deck brings them, buys them one scene card from the top of the scene deck. If a player has to start a scene and does not have a scene card left in their hand, nor a symbol card to trade in for one, they lose their scene for the act. <laughs> I'm with you. I heard hand scene act. So yeah, that's all I heard. Hand scene, scene act. act. So we will be playing these symbol cards, which are the ones with pictures. Ah. Mm-hmm. Um, in some fashion, in the future, if you want to get new scene cards from the top of the act decks, act one, act two, act three, then you have to put one of your symbol cards back on top of the symbol deck, face down. So I would take perhaps dead mouse. What did Chad have to say? Asking, could we introduce the main premise before we start the first scene, just to get us back into tone and mood? Absolutely, I believe redundancy devices will be very handy tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, this this game, it's a little box. I didn't think we'd have this much going on, but there's there's a lot going on here. Yeah, no, we will absolutely. Oh, this we'll, we'll absolutely such a little thing. Once we once we get the yes, we will. That is a good idea. You are my favorite listener right now, viewer slash listener. Yeah, you're my favorite. The boxes are not what they seem. Yes. So safe. Once the victim has been established and everyone has their cards, it's time to start playing through the story of the game. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't know how, but we're 
going to get there. Let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs> Once you've completed the stopping of the starting phase, what? you're ready for the starting of the setup phase. Okay. <laughs> Tell me that's not what that actually says. That's not what that actually says. <laughs> okay. You will do this by creating and playing out scenes. Each player will start one scene per act. All of the players should look over their scene cards until someone has an idea for a scene. Then the first player to have an idea starts the first scene and play proceeds from them, with each player taking a turn to start a scene until everyone has created a scene in the current act. To create a scene, you must choose a scene card from your hand and a protagonist to focus the scene on. Is it just me, or does having six protagonists seem a little weird? It, it does seem like uh, if they're all the protagonist, who's the foil? I think it may mean protagonist of a given scene. Yeah. Okay. I, I would not have used that particular terminology because it's going to confuse liberal arts majors like me. They didn't have you in mind. They, they, they never do, goddammit. <laughs> they never do. Well, because you, you hear the word protagonist, you think main character a lot of times, but... I, I think of it in more technical terms than that, but yes. Oh. Yeah, I, I think I think the one person in a story who is the protagonist, who is the driving force, who is the one that undergoes the hero's journey, who is the yeah, who has the main arc. Yes. Yeah. You can occasionally have like two protagonists, and you can maybe have a team be the protagonist, but it's hard to have six protagonists. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Twin Peaks had one, really. It had supporting characters, but the Cooper. pie. You will start by imagining the scene like one in a movie or TV show and say what the camera sees as the scene opens. Who's there? What actions seem to be taking place? What is the physical environment like? What time of day is it? Continue describing the action that takes place in the scene and how the protagonist interacts with it. You have some options here. Good, because what we need is more options. You can keep describing things as if you're the director of the scene, saying how the camera moves around, what sights and sounds are. They did write this for me. And what people in the scene, especially the protagonist you, of your cho you chose, are doing, saying, and thinking from an omniscient viewpoint. Or you can approach the, your scene from more like an improv actor, saying, if, oh, speaking of um, Twitter joke for the day, mm. uh, did you hear about the, um, the Im improv group that was formed by a bunch of white guys who were uh, fi film theory majors? I did not. Yes, Anderson. All right. Woo! Thank you for giving us that joke in the middle of a rules explanation. You're welcome. Are you reading anything? Uh, yeah. Good. I'll go right on then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you, you can... Uh, and then dropping into character and role-playing the part of your protagonist. This usually involves jumping out of character sometimes to narrate actions the protagonist or other characters take or to describe things that occur in the scene. So like, you know, standard scene calling stuff. But they really spell it out. They really, which, you know, that's yeah, not everybody yeah. knows how to do narrative stuff. So um, I had forgotten. So most players tend to move fluidly between these modes or come up with their own idiosyncratic hybrid, uh, the Terrence Malick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rays of light steal through the leaves of the tree, which we see from below. Now I will read a poem. <laughs> set a tone for how this will all unfold. Evil. Is it in the world? <laughs> Sometimes I feel it in my boot. Mom, you knew evil. Let me put my hand in this pool of water. Oh, my God. The thing is, that might work great for this game. Okay. Most, most worst. I felt, I felt in tones. Uh, However, uh, every scene must begin with a description of what the camera sees as the scene opens. Setting details and atmosphere are important. Seeing what I can skip over here, um, which is always dangerous. Yeah. Play faster podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. It's also not the read the rules podcast, except when Molly's doing it. I'm, I, I'm not nearly as charming as she is. Yeah. Well, I mean, th this. It if we were to have read all of this ahead of time and just jumped into it, there would be a lot of people sitting at home like, wait. Yeah, but I can I can, summar I can summarize a little bit here. Okay. Uh, if the, if you have characters besides the protagonist in your scene, it's a good idea to pull in players at the table to play those characters. Yeah. Um, 
you're, they're not, you don't have to worry about people playing the same character for scene to scene. Um, keep in t mind that there are people in Tall Pines but besides the protagonists. You are free to create new characters during scenes or bring in established ones. Whenever a character, protagonist, or otherwise appears in a scene, name them, write their name on a post-it or index card, and put it on the table. Put a little note about who they are, too. It's a real bummer when you forget who is who. Yeah. That's actually, that's smart. Yeah, it is. It's very smart. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big fan of writing stuff down on things. Oh, yeah. During game. Mm -hmm. I, I am. What? No, it's just the way that you said it. I'm a big fan of writing stuff down on things. <laughs> Oh, during games. Dot dot dot. Yeah. During games. <laughs> I, 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 I would. I enjoyed it. I'm not making fun of you. I enjoyed that. If we really stick to that, by the end of this, we're all going to look like Sam Neill from the end of Into the Mouth of Madness. If you like, names written all over our faces, you're like, yes, Chad Hannington enters with Kate Mulgrew, <laughs> and then you, then you use the hand as a puppet. <laughs> Look at me and tell me who I am. I don't know anymore. The hands confuse me. Okay. Don't look at my face. Look at the words if on my face. If you yell, tell me who I am. Ryan, Ryan, if you're going to yell into the mic, don't yell into the mic. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. If you started a scene, you have final say as to when it's over. Don't cut off scenes too quickly. Sometimes you don't really know what a scene is about until you're a few minutes in. At the same time, you don't want scenes to drag on. The cards in the scene are probably a helpful guide here. Once the maximum three cards have been played into the scene, you're probably getting close to the end. But since I have final say, we're going till midnight. Well. <laughs> if you didn't start the scene, but you want to provide some input, it's going to cost you cards. Cards in scenes. Only three scene cards or symbol cards may be played in a scene. A player may only contribute one card each scene. Okay. The player who creates the scene contributes the first card, a scene card from their hand, when they start the scene. God, this is like the gamiest narrative game I've played in a while. It's pretty gamey. It's, there's a lot going on here. Like, like actually chewy. Like my mind is chewing. <laughs> yeah, rules. I'm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of Montsegur, right? In this, uh, I like I'm wondering, am I gonna, callback. am I gonna try for Kamchatka on the first round? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pieces moving. A lot of pieces around the board here. Um, not that which. It, it may be great. We'll see. We'll see. The, so the few reviews that I read were, were, were positive. Okay. Other players may either contribute a scene card from their hand or a symbol card from the symbol row. If a symbol card is chosen, immediately replace it in the symbol row with a card from the top of the symbol deck. Okay. So we c during a scene that is not our own, we can play cards from this row. Okay. That, that has all the pit. That has the dead rat in it. Symbol the dead rat. Row. The dead rat row. 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 Dead Rat Row, Raggy. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Except Scooby would just eat it because he's always hungry. Dead Rat Row. But it's not cooked food. Like, he's clearly not actually a dog. <laughs> he's clearly a demon that they all keep fed. He's clearly some kind of horrible chimera <laughs> yeah. of genetic technology. Yeah. Scooby snacks are just like minced meat from the victims like of the, the crimes little, that they've investigated. The little rat... Ratman in uh, in Island of Doctor Moreau. Mm, Shaggy's is familiar, mm. and the rest of are his subjects because he's just hungry for mysteries all the time. What's Scrappy? Have you looked? Have you looked at the new, um, totally dark post apocalyptic Scooby Doo series? No, I why, why need Wait, that what? now? It's pretty great. What? It's pretty great. Scrappy Doo is is his offspring. Like he he creates more. He budded. Yeah. God. Yeah, he creates more chaos like that has to be bred into the world. Cronenberg film, The Brood. He just. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know how like like uh, the, the, crappy, crappy do. You know the like the sp <laughs> spooky. You know the the spooky adventures of Sabrina, or the terrifying, yeah, bloody Cronenbergian adventures yeah. of Sabrina, whatever you want to call it. it it's that, but with Scooby Doo. Is it real? Like, yeah, like, it's a comic. Oh, uh, oh, all right, sure. It is a comic book. I've only read pages on the internet. You know that thing where you do where you try and Google pages and try and piece together the story because you're too cheap to go out, out and buy the comic book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but first, in order to understand Dark Scooby Doo, you need to understand <laughs> the Dark Phoenix Saga. No, 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 no. If you want to understand Dark Scooby Doo, you have to understand Dark Velma Saga. <laughs> Still ends with a moon laser, doesn't it? Yeah, Freddy Velma Cameron. Yeah. Fre Freddy, Velma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what are you doing 
keeping on time here? Oh, Jesus, yeah, God. Remember, this is going to be a fast death game. No, no. Well, I mean, you're back for next week. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, if you weren't before, you're back for West <laughs> next week now. Yeah. <laughs> This is just going to be an entire it's episode. Gonna a, it's going to be like a twenty-parter. It's going it's to rival no, Strahd. No, we're going we're gonna get, we're gonna to get to it. We're going to get to it, and the actual gameplay takes fifteen minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to be having to fill time the rest of the time. Oh, oh lord. Okay, where the fuck was I? I just um, can't scrappy deppy do this anymore. <laughs> Wait, give me a second here. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shutting up. Back to serious now. When you contribute a scene card or a symbol card to a scene, you are empowered to describe how it manifests in the scene. Say what the words on the scene card or the image on the symbol card mean in the context of the scene. So you get to decide what the dead rat means. Mm. Wow. I like how they said you're empowered to how it manifests. Like that's a really, you're allowed to say what this means, but that's not what they said. You're, you are empowered to determine how this manifests. Well, it's actually there. That's the better way to say it. That's actually. I know. I really like that though. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's not a, that's not a criticism. That is support. Cameron, please silence your cell phone before I, I, entering I the theater. I can't silence it. it you, okay. Okay. It's an iPhone. You pull down from the top or yours is from the bottom probably. And you see the little moon, you hit the moon and then you lock it. The moon though. Why is it a moon? Because it's sleep mode, so you it silences Ooh. all notifications while your phone's locked. I hadn't touched it because I was afraid it was going to turn me into a werewolf. Fact <laughs> about uh, Google phones, do not disturb, doesn't always count for everything. <laughs> <laughs> like emergencies? A alarms. Uh, mine, uh, mine ignores alarms. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, Christ. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever had one go off on stage? Because uh, I have. I had it go off uh, <laughs> uh, during a take. I was in a, you know, basically just like right off the side yep. right behind a camera watching a scene. Going, this is really cool. This is really amazing to be on a film set. Thank God I've silenced my... And I was like, oh, God damn it. I killed a take. Yeah, mine was back when it was a uh, the Nokia little brick phones, and uh, yeah, it uh, it was during a reading at the Shakespeare Theater. Oh, I was literally on stage with everyone else. <laughs> like I got my hand into my pocket faster than I think anyone has in the history of the world. I'm like they didn't they they did they heard that they all they all heard that. You ever hear the, the Julius Caesar bit? There was a bunch of there's a you know production of Julius Caesar, and they decide that they want to keep all the corpses on stage to show the progression of the damage that Caesar has caused. Somebody brought their phone on stage. Yeah, and in the middle of this pile of bodies, you know, uh, very few people left, and you just hear this ringing, and then somebody in the audience just goes, "Yep." Somebody else goes, "Maybe it's for Caesar." <laughs> <laughs> that is the audience saving your show <laughs> right then and there oh, oh my god oh yeah yeah the, the 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 do not disturb thing for iphone also ignores alarms and and amber alerts and silver alerts and stuff like that oh, as well jesus yeah so just so you know if you ever have to do a thing I mean, we're all down here, and it's it's a far less formal setting than that, but really, you shouldn't take your phones with you uh, anywhere near set or stage lesson. All right. Well, we're good, we're good guys. Only two more pages. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, yeah. Home <laughs> stretch. I only printed four. Uh, no, you didn't. You printed Six. eight. Oh, oh, oh. It was, it was from three to eight. Yeah. Um, two plus two plus, plus one. one. <laughs> one plus two plus one plus... Okay, shutting up now. Not that I have any room to argue, but <laughs> there's no room for me to criticize, but somebody has to pull this train in, into motion. Okay. Yep. Okay, so you can only draw additional scene cards from the scene deck by placing symbol cards. Okay, we talked about this before. Yep. You, can only put, you can only put cards you've already spent mm -hmm. back on top of the symbol deck. Yep. So that we will probably... Re it's kind of like the pandemic mechanic of you'll see cards again soon. Sure. Um... If a player has to start a scene and does not have a scene card left in their hand, nor a symbol card to trade for, trade in for one, they lose their scene for the act. Practically, this means that players should try to reserve one scene or symbol card for their turn so as not to forfeit a scene. I'm just playing my shit like all in the first scene. We're laying it all down. You can't, like, though, because you can only play down. one scene card per scene. Three. Total. No. Amongst all the... You can play three cards, but you can't play two of the same card, right? You yeah, can't. but you can play, you can play like a, a symbol card. Right, but it said keep a scene card. 
Yeah, I know. I don't know. There, why. there. Are, well, oh, that would be a problem if we had more than three people. I'm coming on to Camp Chuck. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, we we literally can't run into that problem because we only have we three only people. Have three of us. Yeah. Okay. Once the player who started the scene declared it over, there are a few things still to do. So you got to go scene mm-hmm. with your fist, like in the scene. Um, first, look at the conditions listed on any. Oh my God, we're gonna have conditions. Okay, conditions listed on any protagonists who appeared in the scene. If a protagonist's condition was met, flip their card. Oh, okay. So we're not—they're not like gaining, you know, um, stunned, <laughs> blinded, uh, 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 fully concealed, petr- petrified. <laughs> um, Prep your phoenix down. Um, for instance, the federal agent says, "If you got inside the killer's head in the last scene, flip this card over." Ooh. So they have like oh, that's kind of cool yeah. conditions that we have to check. Huh. What if the killer's not a person? How do we get? Does in? it say that it was a person's head? What if the killer per se was like a demon that was also like manifested as like a like a redneck hillbilly out in the middle of nowhere? Like that, that would never work. <laughs> What are you going to do? Name him Bob? <laughs> right? Yeah. <sighs> okay, and so the protagonist cards have those. Um, and the scene cards have them, too. Ch- no, check the tones. So, like, if you flip this over... Okay, yeah. So the, the protagonist cards have a tone down at the bottom, like the federal agent has understanding. Aww. On the front, it says resolve. So it's got one on each. Um, so you see if they match the tones on any player's secret card. If so, that player starts the next scene following the instructions that are the secret card. Um, so basically, you get a bonus scene, which is your secret scene. So if I get if if ever there's resolve, resolve, and shame showing at the end of a scene, my, I flip my secret, which would happen really quickly, given that there's like two resolves and two shames up there. Mine can't resolve. Yet. Yet. No, it has three understandings. None of our prote- we don't have three protagonists with understanding. Yeah, they have something else on the backs. Oh. And they have oh, yeah. and they have triggers that flip them. Oh. There is a lot going on in this game. Yeah, this is not this is not a mechanically light narrative game. <laughs> despite the size of the box. It's I mean, almost it is if- mechanically light in, in that the it is a scene calling game and they're basically saying, Hey, do what you feel. But there are lots of mechanics. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of moving parts. It's almost as if they were trying to emulate the feeling of watching Twin Peaks and trying to fil- figure out who killed Laura Palmer. There were conspiramids about that. Oh, sure, sure. And I, yeah, I'm, but bear in mind, I'm, I'm totally reserving, ju- even as I'm making fun of it, I'm totally reserving judgment on the amount of shit going on in this game. It's just, you know, in terms of generating quality content sitting down and expecting to entertain our listeners. We have to kind of, yeah. We haven't done that tonight, so, mm. so. <laughs> oh, no. I think we Scrappy Deppy did. <laughs> so, I, which is not to say we're going to. Um, I'm pretty much, I, I've given up on that. Uh, um, not just for tonight, but for every night going forward. Oh, James, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> All right. Third, put all the scene cards played in the scene into a discard pile next to the scene deck and give any symbol cards back to the players who played them in the scene. Okay, so instead of going back on the row, they go to the player, which is right because you can then play them later. I comprehended everything. Or you can you actually said. you can cash them in for new scene cards, right? Yeah. Sure. I I didn't catch any of that and I was listening to you intently. Okay. See the yellow cards? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You you have a hand of three yellow cards, right? Yep. You play mm-hmm. yellow cards to Advance the scene. Start scenes or get involved in scenes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? You can also play picture cards, which are the purple cards. Right. From the row that's showing six of them to do the same thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anytime mm-hmm. you've played scene cards, they go in a discard pile. Yep. And happens you play the purple cards, which are the symbol cards, those go to you. Sure. And then in order to buy new uh, yellow cards, buy new scene cards, you can put a purple card on top of the purple deck. Got it. And if we run out of symbol cards, something bad happens? Um, well, then you've, you've got a tap for two blue mana. <laughs> and uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to run out of symbol cards. <laughs> because, uh, because they're continually recycling. They're continually oh, right, right, going right. back on top of right, them. Right, right, right. Yeah. I would like to mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> kind of mulligan down to two. Yeah. 
Oh. God, is that, I think I'm playing this narrative game wrong. <laughs> um, I'd like to forge a key. <laughs> Right, and so you check. You check that at the end of any scene, you check your tones and see if it triggers your secret. If it does, you get an extra scene right then and there. Okay. Now, when we che- when we're checking the tones, uh-huh. are we checking versus all six protagonists? I believe so. Okay, that so makes like, more sense. Assuming if nobody flipped on this first time round, mine would trigger automatically. Gotcha. Now, the protagonists only flip if their trigger was met while they were in a scene, yeah? Or do they flip... You check at the end of the scene. Even if... But but will a protagonist trigger flip if they weren't in the scene, even if their trigger was met? Uh, sure, but I mean... Yeah, no, they, they absolutely would. It, it, it'd be hard to imagine how that would happen, but if it did, I, I yeah, I, I would have no... You know, like, somehow the federal agent isn't in the scene, but you know from afar that they got into the killer's head... Sure. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. When you say you, I was thinking like the royal you, like you, the people playing the game, got into the killer's head about something. Not no, the... no, no, no. It's to the when you're okay. When you're playing a scene, you become the protagonist in that scene. Right. The card is directed to the protagonist in the person. I don't know which person is that. That's first second. person. Second person. You is second. Yep. Yeah. You is important. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so everybody gets one scene per act. You read the condition on the top of the act close card, which will determine who gets to start the scene that closes the act. In okay. this case, that is uh, whoever last cheered for a sports. A sport. Does I, it count if I, count, if I, count if I cheer for Ryan? Go, Ryan. You're, just, you're such a sport. Yeah, that's fine. Also, I think that out of all of us, you are the most sport-enthused I used to be. I'm not anymore. Right, and we never were. So that you are the most recent. Yeah, probably, that, that probably. Makes you, yeah, yeah. Pro- you probably. Well, wait, 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 wait. Would we count esports? Sure. Then that would be. It me. says a sport. Yeah, I have I have cheered for an esport quite recently. Go Sonic Fox. That's correct. I don't know. I watched rare footage of Daigo actually angry today. Uh, did you see that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. It's there was there was a, yeah there was a Smash Brothers version yeah. of rare footage of Daigo actually angry evo yeah. moment number seventeen. First of all, it's 37. Sorry. Second of all. Oh, yeah, you saw that on my page. I yeah, I did. That. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, it's so good. Right before the Daigo. Actually, I cheer every time that video Let's comes on. Let's go, Justin! <laughs> the narrator comes in. <laughs> Justin loses, by the way. <laughs> Just, hey, you, have you watched that? Have I showed you that before? I don't think so. All right, we're doing that as soon as we get off air, my friend. Uh, because It's the greatest Street Fighter moment in history. It will transform your life. Okay, I gotta see this, yeah. yeah. Um... D A I G O for those of you out there. Whatever. He's still competing. I'm sure he still is. Still kicking. Him and Justin Wong both. And you know what's hilarious? They came back years later to redo that fight, and Justin won. Uh, Any given Sunday. Um, so then the act close happens. Um, you probably find that some of the blanks you see in the story are being unconsciously filled in. Okay. After it closes, you talk through whatever. Some kind of, like you know who killed you the victim. You talk through whatever, whatever. Who killed the victim? Are there multiple suspects, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Game, <laughs> game, <Table>. play, <laughs> friends, so, hand, podcast. <laughs> so theoretically speaking, that's how you play uh, Tall Pines. I've absorbed all that information. You have no questions. <laughs> We've answered them all. And on that note, no, Cat, anything, anything from from Chad that could stretch this out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Uh, God. They're apparently very interested in a sport production tavern because I've been giving them drink recipes. Oh. oh. Ooh, we should give yeah. you a fucking bar back there. There is no reason not to. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Victory. We need to completely redo this basement so that it's the like bar. it's like a cozy basement bar that looks infinitely cooler than the set that that. Uh, oh no! Fuck you guys. Just just sport production gets a bar. No, I'm saying it sets the, the atmosphere and that the rest of the basement is just cool. You're going to wear a tuxedo vest, right? Or tuxedo shirt. No, she's going to be like King from, uh, from King of Fighters. That's all you have to say. I, I Fingerless gloves, 
yeah. tuxedo shirt and vest. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I, I, was, I was going for Delbert Grady, but okay. Yeah, she uh, she's the greatest bouncer ever. Oh. Yeah, okay. King okay. is a is a nightclub bouncer, and uh, she kicks ass. She's dapper. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dapper as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has legs that go all the way up. All the way? Every, I mean, everybody does, unless you're up. like Vector Man. Wait, no, I'm, I'm th- sorry. I was listening to, to our um, uh, previous um, Nightcrawler investigations because we we did we riffed on this for like five minutes, on, <laughs> like six months ago. I'm imagining legs coming out of like the, the neck, and it's you know. It's well, I mean, all the way. Well, what is all the way really? Like, yeah, where... we, no, we riffed. We we did that. We did that. <laughs> yeah, there's. I know. I know. We're bringing. It's called a callback. <laughs> Circling back on that joke. Well, we could leave this. Um, oh, so we're, why don't? We're, yeah, we're not. We're not playing this today. <laughs> well, so but but for the sake it's of it, it's all set up for next week. For it the is. for the sake of it, why don't why can, Cameron? Do you feel up to running back through top to bottom a real like since you've read it already a, mu- a much quicker sure, overview? Sure. Sure. I mean, how, yes, I think so, I think so. So to sum, to sum it up, to yeah. sum it up, okay. What's her face has been killed. Yeah. Joe Joe Kaslock has been killed, mm-hmm. um, and. We look at our scene cards that are here. The first person that has an idea about it plays, starts a scene. Right, the person who's most recently cheered for us. No. Oh, oh, no. that's that's who to closes. To start with, yeah, right. that's who closes. To start with, and to start each act, I assume, whoever wants to start it off, Mike's like, oh, I have an idea, which is a good way to do it. Um, and you play, anytime you want to participate in the scene, but not, not participate, because like, you can be an NPC in it, but anytime you want to have a say in what's going on in the scene, you play either one of the scene cards in your hand or one of the uh, symbol cards, which are the pictures. Dead right. right. Okay. And you play, the, you play those from the ones that are already on the table, like not from your hand. At the end of the scene, you discard uh, your scene cards, but your symbol cards go back in your hand. Or not hand. Yeah, I guess the hand, whatever. Um, anytime you want to get a new scene card, you can trade in a symbol card, putting it back on top of the deck so it'll come up again for a new scene card. Uh, each scene is a maximum of three cards of any kind. Uh, the scene's over when I say it's over. And, uh, and and after each scene, there's a lot of status checking on the, on the cards for the protagonists and the act that are, that are, that may cause them to flip. And they each have a status at the bottom of the card, like uh, shame or resolve, understanding, that you will then, at the end of each scene, compare to the the kind of you have you have three of them on your secret that are kind of the key to your secret, and when your secret gets tripped, you have an, an additional scene that is your secret scene. And then there are three acts. Okay. Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's yeah. actually that's, that's pretty clear. Yeah. I really kind of wish I'd read this <laughs> tonight, but we were, you know, in my defense, this was not just my usual utter laziness I, it was that but it was also the fact that we've been we've been shuffling who would be here tonight a great deal oh yeah um we had like about five different casts <laughs> for a night yeah yeah and uh, so what we were actually going to play was kind of up in the air until airtime and this is just, this is just the one that i the game that i happen to have kind of in my back pocket to run yeah it was it was great we had a we had a get together yesterday uh, at my house, everybody was here and, uh, Cameron was like, yeah, can you figure out something to run? I was like, sure. And I was like literally down in the studio thumbing through all of the role-playing games I own. And like one person is two people were unable to make it, you know, like we, we, we had a person cancel literally half an hour before curtain tonight. <laughs> yeah. Another, another person had car troubles. Another person had like surprise vacation. So, so hello world. <laughs> so this is what it looks and, like and we got james on top of all of that uh, fame costs and this is where you start paying <laughs> wait what james do you know do you know fame no and i'm gonna live forever yeah it's i'm pretty sure that De- debbie allen that says that on the tv series she has cane and she sta- stabs it on the floor she goes fame costs clunk this is where you start paying wow fame i'm gonna live forever you know the movie still. I don't know about the TV show, but the movie still holds up. I I, I gotta go back and watch it again. Trey Jolie, Coco. Trey Jolie. <laughs> so safe. Okay. On that note, this has been another episode of the Play Better Podcast, bringing you the absolute best in the world of tabletop gaming, and teaching you at length how to play it better. <laughs>
<sighs> Playbettercast at gmail.com. Playbettercast at gmail.com. We love getting letters from you guys, suggestions for topics, questions about things going on in your gaming life or your life in general, or, you know, just about things. We'll do physics questions. We don't care. We'll do, probably do them wrong, but we'll do them. Um, at Playbettercast on the Twitters and the Instagrams. Twitch. We're a thing on Twitch. Play Better Productions Play on Twitch. Play Better Productions on Twitch. And please check out our Cafe Press store for all kinds of Ratbaggers and Play Better Productions swag. Good day to be Carl is coming down the pike. Yes. Yeah. We just have to find the right Play. pallet jack. Oh, God. Is that what's going to be on it? Okay. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> we had that whole thing about how we're going to screen, pl- screen, screen print plaid on it. No, no, no. It's, it's going to be, it's gonna be, be pallet jack. jack. Nice. Um, what if we screen printed a plaid pallet jack on it? <gasps> we'll see. I'll have, to, I'll have to see the designs. I'm not promising anything. I want it. <laughs> You've never wanted a plaid pallet jack before, but now you do. No, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that might not happen. So I'm sorry to set expectations for anybody that's out there. It's like, yes. Um, this this episode is de- dedicated, of course, to Lama Palaver. <laughs> Lama Palaver. May they rest eternally. In peace. Shiny and chrome. Or may, may their uh, may their death be uncovered as some crazy old kook by the murder mystery machine, apparently. The mystery mystery machine of murder. Llama Palaver. Llama Palaver. Llama Palaver. Llama Palaver. Llama Palaver. I'm Cameron McNary. I'm James Flanagan. And I'm Ryan Seguin. And I miss Molly because she would say I'm Llama Palaver here. She would. I thought about I thought about going out on the dumb outro as a, as an homage to Molly. Which kind of have to yeah. It's just you you know that it's there. Yeah. Play well. <laughs>